I'm Anil Kumar. Let me first thank all my subscribers for taking keen interest in my channel and posting great questions. Now this question had been posted long time back, however, I was on a holiday and so couldn't answer. So Mr. Ahmed, I sincerely apologize for that. Now it is based on multi-variables in schools here. We are working with single variables as a very special case. I'm taking this up. Uh, well, you should understand I'm not the best to give you the solution of these questions, but I'll try my best. Well, the question here is, a farm's profit P equals to 100x plus 80y plus 2xy minus x square minus 2y square minus 5000, where x is the number of turkeys produced and y is the number of beef cattle produced. How many of each should be produced to maximize the profit? Proof that profit is indeed maximized at this level of production. What is the maximum profit? It's an excellent question and it will help me to give, uh, well, very good concepts on uh, multivariable functions and how to find extreme values. So let's begin with the function itself, which is the profit function P equals to 100x plus 80y plus 2xy minus x square minus 2y square minus 5000. So whenever you're doing multivariables, we do partial derivatives, right? So we'll find derivative of this function with respect to x, partial derivative of this function with respect to y, that will give us two equations. From these two equations, we can find the critical number, right? So let's find the partial derivative first. I'll represent that as p of x. That is, we'll do partial derivative of this equation. So all the terms where x is not there will be treated as a constant. So derivative of this equation with respect to x will be 100. Derivative of this is 0. This will be plus 2y. Here will be minus 2x, right? This will be 0. That will be 0. Now, partial derivative for this equation with respect to y will be, this is 0. With respect to y, that is giving me 80. That gives me plus 2x. This is 0. That is minus 4y. Derivative of a constant is 0. Now, to find the critical numbers, we have to equate them to 0 and simplify, right? So saving space, what I'll do here is I'll equate these two equations to 0, right? This is to find critical number. Just as you do in single variable calculus, right? Now, so from here, you can simplify these two equations simultaneously and solve for x and y. So let's do it. Let's rearrange the very first equation, which is 2x minus 2y, bringing 100 to the other side, dividing by 2. So when we do that, from the first equation, I could write this as 2x minus 2y equals 200. And that gives me, dividing by 2, as x minus y equals 250, right? So that gives me the first equation. Perfect. Now the second equation which I get by simplifying is taking these two terms just as we did here and then I'll divide simultaneously by 2, correct? So, so if I take this here, it becomes 4y divided by 2 is 2y. So I'm writing this as 2y. Taking this on the other side, minus 2x divided by 2 is minus x and 80 divided by 2 is 40. So from the second equation, we get this perfect. I hope I've skipped a step here. However, uh, that should not be difficult to work out, right? So we get these two equations. To solve these equations, I could add these two equations, right? So this is my equation 1, and this is equation 2. So if I add them up, x and x terms cancel, we get y equals to 90, right? So if I add them up, that is to say, if I add these equations, then I get 2y minus y, which is y equals to 90. So I get y equals to 90 
as the critical number. To find the value of x, what I can do here is, let's do it on the right side. I can pick up one of these equations. Let's say x minus y equals to 50, right? So we have x minus y equals to 50. I can write this as x equals to 50 plus y. And we know y is 90. So x is equals to 50 plus 90. And that is x equals to 140. So we do have a critical number, which is 140, 90, correct? So if you read this, x becomes the number of turkeys, y is the beef cattle produced. So that is turkey and cattle. Now we've done one part, that is we just found a critical number. Now it says how many of each should be produced to maximize the profit. Now how do we know whether this critical number represents maximum or a minimum value or neither, right? So. So that is very critical to understand. To find that, we will do second derivative test, right? So, so we'll do second derivative test. Uh, that is to say, we'll try to figure out what is the second derivative. Let's write it like this. And uh, in this second derivative, we try to find the second derivative of the function. Uh, since we are using p as the function, so we could write this as second derivative with respect to x, second derivative with respect to y for x, second derivative like this, and y of y. So we're trying to figure out this value, correct? If this value is greater than zero, then we have maximum or minimum, right? So second derivative should be positive, uh, should be, should be should be greater than zero for maximum or minimum. And the value will depend on uh, the value of the second derivative with respect to x. If it is positive, we are expecting a minimum. If this is negative, we are expecting a maximum. I hope that's clear, right? So I'm assuming that you know these concepts and from here, I'm moving on, not explaining them more than this. So, so we do have the first derivative here. So let's find the second derivative. So we'll derive, de find partial derivative of this equation, um, which is for the first partial derivative. With respect to x, if you do that, you get zero here, zero here, and you get minus two. Okay, second derivative for y, that is byy, will be minus four, right? So both are negative. When both are negative, their product is going to be positive, and we do expect maximum or minimum. So that's kind of a hint to you, right? So it is a case of maximum or minimum. Since this is negative, we expect a maximum, correct? So I hope that concept is clear to you. Anyway, we'll calculate the value. So what is the derivative, partial derivative of this with respect to y? It will be plus two, right? So. So we have done the derivative from here, these two equations got these values for our partial second derivative, correct? So these are partial second derivative, is it okay? Now, to find the value of t, basically, we do product of these two, which is minus two times minus four, right? So you could do product of these two, take away, product of this, which is square of 2. So the value <coughs> here is 8 minus 2 square is 4. So we get positive 4. Now since this is greater than 0, we know this value represents, oh, this is greater than 0, right? So this value, we know it could be maximum or minimum. And to figure out whether it is maximum or minimum, we check the value of partial derivative of x. Now, in our case, we know Pxx is actually less than zero. That means it is a case of maximum. Is it okay? So this is a case of maximum. So we have answered the first question here. How many of each should be produced to maximize the profit? Since we know that it is a case of maximum, we should produce 140 turkeys and 90 kettle, 
right? That is what it is. Now, the next part is prove that the profit is indeed maximized at this level of the production. That is by the second derivative test, which we have done also, right? What is the maximum profit? So we can just plug in the value and calculate, right? So we can have value of P as equals to 100 times X value is 140 plus 80 times 90 plus 2 times 140 times 90 minus uh, 140 square minus 2 times y is 90 square minus 5000 is okay uh, well you can calculate this value write down the answer that becomes the profit for you so let's do it uh, don't believe in my calculations do it on your own 140 okay plus 80 times 90 plus 2 times 140 times 90 minus 140 square minus 2 times 90 square minus 5000 okay so that gives us a value of 5600 so for us the maximum profit is 5600 right so that is how you can actually solve this question I hope uh, I just rushed through it assuming that you have the concepts I'll take some time to make few videos on uh, the basic concepts explaining you this part of second derivative uh, later right so I hope that will help but for now I think it serves the purpose thank you and all the best keep posting questions and I think I'll be more regular next time thank you and all the best.